Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today we are taking a look at the brand new Mega Halo Floodgate Firefight set. Now, I got this set from Amazon. I will have a link down in the description for all of you to check out. It retailed for $75, and it includes 633 pieces. Now, one of the really cool elements about this set is that it was actually a fan vote winner, so we actually got a say in some of the elements of this set, including what the set was, some of the inclusions, like this little yellow guy back here. We're gonna take a look at that. But overall, this set has so many great Halo 3 elements to it, some really awesome details, and we're gonna take a look at everything. Now, this is a pretty large set in terms of space that it takes up, but it's really a bunch of smaller sets kind of pieced together to make a much larger set. There's a lot of individual little set pieces that you can just put around and build your own little firefight scenario, kind of story tell with how you arrange the different components. And I really like that about this set. What you're seeing here is the basic configuration that the instructions will tell you how to build, but each wall, like this standing wall here, this component here, and that back wall are all detachable. Now to look at the set overall, we're gonna start with the smaller details and work our way up to the larger sections of this build. You get a small chest like this, and inside of it, there are two magnums ready for action. What I found really cool about this set is just how many little weapons and extra accessories you get with it, all stored away in different ways so that you could either equip Master Chief with them or some of the Flood. There's also this larger crate which you can pop open, revealing a rocket launcher and a shotgun. Giving these to the Flood would just create the most nightmare scenario possible in Halo. If you've ever played, especially on Legendary, uh, you know the Rocket Flood are one of the biggest nuisances in the game, maybe second only to the Jackal Sniper in Halo 2. Now these can also be stacked on top of each other if you wanna make little uh, barricades or just kinda store them away a little bit. And what's also really fun is that if you open up this storage container, just like so, you could also just slide them into there and stow everything away for later. Kind of helps you keep some of the small pieces from getting lost or just making a story element where maybe Master Chief has to break open this big shipping container to get extra ammunition. Speaking of ammunition, there's this little brick built weapons container. You get two battle rifles and two grenades on this side. And on the flip side, you have two assault rifles and two more grenades. What I really like are these UNSC logo printed elements here on either end. This set does not contain a single sticker, which I absolutely appreciate. And as you'll see, as we get into this more, there are some really fantastic printed elements, which just adds such a nice touch to this set. And these in particular are really nice. For any custom set builders, a piece like this with the printed logo, I think is gonna be really, really nice to build UNSC bases or custom vehicles, or just building more of these, you know, more ammo crates like this. This is a really cool element to have. There's also this cement barricade. It's printed in sort of like a, I would almost call it like cookies and cream plastic. You know, they, all these little speckles and flakes are mixed in with the plastic during the molding process, giving it a really cool weathered look and making it look a lot like cement. You also have this stack of sandbags. Now each of these are individual bricks, so this is just the configuration that they show in the instructions, but you can really have a lot of fun with this and build it however you want. There's a lot of fun ways that this could be integrated with like the cement barricade and making a little last stand point for Master Chief, or if you have some extra marine figures, build it out that way. You also get this machine gun turret on a tripod. Now, this is technically a Halo Reach uh, machine gun. This is like George's heavy machine gun. But, you know, for the scenario, it works. We can just kind of look past that. You have this little armor plate on the front, which is removable. And then you can also remove this from the stand. And it has attachment points so that Master Chief can carry this around and use it against the flood. Moving on to probably the most important part of this set, we have the working operational forklift. I love this little build. I love the color usage. These are printed elements with the black and yellow stripes and the S2 is also printed on there. This was part of the fan vote. Fans really wanted a working, you know, operational forklift, even though in the game, you couldn't drive these back in Halo 3. You could drive them in Halo Reach, but in Halo 3, you could not operate them. But I guess we can all dream of a better world, an alternate universe where these were in fact drivable on Floodgate. It features an operational lift system. So if you wanna put maybe the ammo box on there like that, and then 
lift it up out of reach of the flood for some reason. I don't know. You can you can play around with it. You can have some different elements like that. I love that it's operational in that way. However, those uh, those pieces are just held on with two studs. So sometimes the forks will come free and you know it's not the most stable build for those, but it does work. This hatch can also be lifted like so, giving you the space to place a forklift certified Master Chief in his rightful place. Honestly, the Flood and the Covenant don't stand a chance against the forklift certified Master Chief. Now then, taking a look at another element of this build, here we have the shipping container. This has a nice print on both sides with the brand logo for Traxxas Heavy Industries. This is a nice print, and it might be a reference to Halo Reach. I can't remember if Traxxas appears in Halo 3 or not, but I know for sure in New Alexandria, you visit Traxxas Tower as part of that, you know, aerial combat mission in, uh, in the latter part of Halo Reach. So it might be a deep cut reference or it might just be like something that I missed in Halo 3. But either way, really nice prints there for this container. And of course, it also does open up, allowing you to store elements in there. It's a great way to store some of the smaller pieces so you don't lose them. You, know, you can just toss them in there, close up the doors, and then it blends in with the set as part of like the set dressing. But also it keeps you from losing some of the, you know, small weapons and things like that. The way this attaches to the crane mechanism is pretty simple. It's really just studs on the top that connect to this claw machine so you can just snap it on and off really really easily traveling all the way up to the top we have this little track system that can slide pretty easily there are a couple times where it will get caught on some of the gaps where you might just have to like rework it but for the most part you can slide that back and forth very freely and turning the gear at the top will allow you to slowly but surely raise that shipping container up into the air it does take a little bit of work, but you know, you get there eventually. It's not a fast process, but it's pretty rewarding to have this type of play feature in a brick built set like this. And once again, when it's fully elevated, you can still slide that back and forth as desired. But this makes for a perfect segue into taking a look at the rest of this build, looking at some of the larger sections here and the details therein. This left side is pretty open. You just have these little walkways with the markings on the floor, some floodlights, a barrel, up here you have a fusion coil. There are just a few minor details on the backside here just with the floodlights. So, so it doesn't exactly have an ugly side, but it's definitely not the most detailed section of this build. This back wall features a little bit more detail and it's definitely more filled in with some bigger panel pieces. These parts are cast in a really cool metallic brown, which I feel contrasts very nicely with this cement coloration that they have on this side. And it goes into that metallic brown and just looks really nice. Of course, you have little details like the fusion coil and the traffic cone there. Spinning it slightly, you can see the controls there for the door, as well as a really nice printed health pack. That can be removed and taking an up-close look at that. It's got some really great detail all printed on there. Again, there are no stickers in this set, which is so appreciated. Coming around to the backside of this wall, again, it's very simple, it's very plain, but it's not ugly. I don't feel like this is a bad way to display it. Obviously, the front-facing side looks looks better, but this still covers all the necessary elements. It doesn't have any exposed ugliness, I feel like. It just doesn't have as much character as the front-facing side. Then we move on to this section on the right. This is definitely the most fleshed out portion of this build. You have the printed elements of level two, zero and the two are printed on separate pieces there. This element here on this wall is also printed. You have an additional fusion coil as well as some floodlights here. And overall, it just has probably the best build and aesthetic out of all of these. Down below there, these windows actually can be opened up, though the one does get inhibited by that control panel. But you could have those opened up, have Master Chief on the other side, you know, shooting out of them or something like that. Just another cool little play feature. On the back side, this one definitely opens up more for playability and places to incorporate figures, maybe some extra Marines, again, have the flood in here, something like that. But you have some crates up top, and then you come down into this control center room. You have some really nice printed elements here with these two keyboards, as well as this Traxxas logo piece and this readout of the forklift. You know, the, you gotta be very technical with your forklift. You gotta make sure that all the parts are labeled and in, in the right place. I, I love that little screen there. You get an additional little traffic cone there, and there is a working door that opens up to allow access to this area. Now then moving down to the bottom here, there's a surprise that I was not expecting and that is the inclusion of this printed skull piece. Now, if you're a fan of Halo, you know all about the hidden skulls throughout the missions that unlock different features for the game, and this one is no exception. This is the fog skull. That is the one that you find on Floodgate. 
Now, you don't find it in some random storage basement like you see here with crates and a gas tank. You do, in fact, have to try rather hard to get that skull in the game, but it's still a great inclusion. I did not know that that was going to be here, and when I opened that bag and that fell out, I was really, really excited. So once again, I feel like this is the most playable area of this build. The rest are completely usable and functional, but this has a four wide base area for your characters to stand. There's a lot more things to interact with, like the little boards, the skull. Those little details like that just make this a much more fun area to focus on. But there's still plenty of other options. You know, there are studs on all the stairs to have a character coming up or down them. There is also space to put a character behind this railing, though it's hard to get them to stand directly on the studs. But with the railing, you can just kind of place them there and they're not going to fall off or anything. One final thing to touch on with this overall build is that you can actually fairly easily remove the whole crane system from the top. And with it removed, it allows you to unfold the set fully and you can have just a straight lineup like this. Each wall section is also attached on these little hinges, so you can just pop those off and have them freestanding. But it also allows you to rearrange them somewhat, so you could have this wall over here for some reason. You could fold that in and make more of a narrow corridor. And I've even seen people buy two of this set just to combine these different wall elements and make I guess sort of a mega floodgate firefight, which is really cool to see. I probably won't do that at full price, but if I found one of these on sale, I would definitely pick up a second one just to flesh out this little set a little bit more. But the modularity that this set incorporates is really fun and it's a great play element. And it's also a great display element. You know, I think a lot of fans of the mega series are collectors, not so much kids playing with them. And so depending on the size of your shelf or the way that you want to arrange this, it does give you a lot of different options here. And of course, like with any building block system, you could just ignore the instructions altogether and build your own floodgate set. You know, maybe you could just take all the pieces from this wall and incorporate it into this section and flesh this one out more. Uh, you know, it's completely up to you because at the end of the day, these block systems are designed to be customizable. You know, you get the base instructions, it gives you a pretty good set, but ultimately you can do whatever your imagination dreams up with. And at the end of the build process, you are left with all of these extra pieces. Nothing terribly interesting or special, no extra printed elements, but hey, you know, if you lose something, you have some extras here and that's always nice. Now then moving on, let's talk about the minifigures. First up, we get a lot of the infection forms. I'm so glad that they just went all out and gave us 10 of these infection forms. You can never have too many and honestly, they are, as gross and as squishy as I would want them to be. I love the mold that Mega uses for this. It's gross, it's squishy, it's got all the nasty elements that you would want from an infection form. These do come disassembled, so you just have to, you know, insert the little tentacle bits into each one, but you actually get some nice variation here as well. So just to mix things up, you actually get four of these light, fleshy gray colored infection forms, then you get four of these more I guess, flesh tone ones, you know, you get four of this color and then you get two of these darker gray colored ones. It just gives you a little bit more variety when you have like a horde of these things running out of a doorway or something. And yeah, I appreciate that. It's, it's very fun to just have a handful of infection forms like this. They can just be terrorizing a squad of Marines or something just dropping from the ceiling. Now then we also have this flood tank form, which is really awesome. Great sculpt work and even articulation. You know, he's got like a ball jointed head, ball jointed arms, ball joint and swivel jointed legs here as well. And he does come with a base just to make sure that he doesn't fall over. Now I know that this isn't a new mold. However, I don't know if previous iterations were this nicely painted. This one has a lot of like brownish color as well as like a lighter flesh tone and some green moldy bits kind of all over. It's just, it's really gross and icky looking and that's exactly what I would want out of a giant flood form like this. The face is actually molded in this softer plastic so I think if these are misshapen out of the box you could always heat them up and then reposition them but honestly just having them going off at weird angles looks perfectly fine with me. And then you get two of these new articulated flood elite forms, flood combat forms. They look really gross and awesome as well. And what is perfect with this set in particular is that the Mega Heroes series, the latest wave I believe, has a marine combat form with similar articulation and stuff. 
So now you can really flesh out, you know, get it, no pun intended, flesh out your flood army with this set and then also those additional marines. I don't know that we've ever gotten a brute infected form yet, so hopefully that's in the pipeline somewhere and we can see those soon. But these are really awesome. You get one with a plasma pistol, one with a plasma rifle. However, you can definitely equip them with any of the weapons included in this set or from your collection. The head is on a ball joint, so you can articulate that, you know, mangled elite head any which way you want. The arms are articulated fully like any mega figure, but they also have these articulated tendrils coming out of the left arm and then the legs and everything are just articulated like a normal modern elite figure from mega so so it's what we've come to expect with those newer figures but this additional element with the flood is just so grotesque and so awesome i absolutely love these things again one of the things i appreciate with this set is that they've included so many different flood forms you get the two combat forms you get the tank and you get the 10 infection forms that's what a flood set should be, is an absolute horde of these things, because, you know, one or two isn't really anything to worry about, but when you have an entire swarm of flood coming at you, it doesn't matter what difficulty you're on, you better run. And then finally, we have this Halo 3 Master Chief figure. This is actually exclusive to the set. I didn't realize that when I got it, but then looking at it, this is the only version of Master Chief you can get that has the flood like goo printed on it. He's got the goo all over him on his shoulder pad there, on his chest plate. That is a unique print. And while it's subtle, it is a nice way to have an exclusive variant of the Master Chief in this set. He does have the little battle damage there on his chest plate as well. He comes with this flamethrower that has a really nice printed face on the front there, kind of the flying tiger, tiger shark gunship type face. I always love that little detail there. And altogether, this is a good figure. I really like that there's also additional weapons that you can equip him with in this set, depending on how you want to you know, display it or play with it. It's all up to you and they've given you a lot of options there. For the printing, I do love the exclusivity of it all, but I do wish some of that goo was kind of printed on the legs, maybe printed on the visor just to make him look really, really gross. But for what it is, I do like it. I like the, I like the little addition of a unique Master Chief because we do have a lot of these figures. There's only so much you can do with the Master Chief and eventually you just, you have too many of them in your collection. So having a unique one included in this set is very much appreciated. But that is gonna do it for my review of the Mega Halo Floodgate Firefight. So to wrap things up, give you some final thoughts. I really do like this set. I think it has a lot of great elements for what it is as a Flood Firefight set. The number of figures is perfect. The inclusion of this little build for the forklift is fantastic. The printed pieces are such a nice inclusion. I especially, like I said, I love this printed ammo box. It's such a cool inclusion. I love that it's brick built. And yeah, I think this is very useful for a lot of different builds. The price point could be better though. I feel like at the $75 mark, I would have liked a little bit more fleshed out builds as far as some of these walls. These are just a little bit plain. They're not super interesting. I wish that there was at least one more that was fully decked out like this level two back here. This one is really nice and I wish that this one kind of was compatible in that sense, that it was a little bit more fleshed out, a little bit more three-dimensional, but I still feel like there's good value here for $75. If you could get it for 65 or 60, that would be a little bit more comfortable in my mind, but really for what it is, I'm still okay with it. You know, you get some very nice figures, you get an exclusive Master Chief, even though it's simple, it's still a nice inclusion, and you get a lot of fun playability and interchangeability with this set. So like I said, I will have a link down in the description of this video if you want to pick up one of these for your very own. Hopefully it's still in stock. I know it's kind of fluctuated in and out of stock on Amazon. Hopefully that changes soon and, you know, everybody who wants one can get one. Now, this is kind of a change from some of my normal content here on the channel doing, you know, a, a Mega Block, a Halo Mega Block review. I have some more sets like the Scorpion set. Uh, let me know if you think that I should do a review of that here on the channel because uh, I'm going to build it one way or the other. I just don't know if I should upload the review of it, you know, if that's something that you guys want to see. So let me hear from you down in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And, you know, let me know if you're picking sets up like this. You know, is, do you feel like this is worth that $75 price point? Let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, that is where we are wrapping this video up. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you all so much for watching. Down in the description, there is a link tree where you can find my Instagram and all of my other social medias. You can follow me over there for toy photography, toy content, and you know, I post 
things like this on my stories when they go live for order or pre-order so all of you can get you know heads up on these things dropping but anyways thank you all again so much for watching have a wonderful evening noon or night depending on when you're watching this video of course and as always i'll be sure to catch you all in the next video <laughs>